<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Eclectica. This is awesome. Guys, 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 Happy New Year. How's everybody doing today? Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. So we've got Drew out on the West Coast. We've got Dean Constantine on the East Coast. And across the pond, we have Neil. Neil Gibson, how you doing, Neil? Very well, thank you. How are you doing? Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. So let's jump into, let's jump into TV first, because that's the easiest. There's a whole bunch of shows coming back, finally, a whole bunch of series. Um, got the uh, Walking Dead coming back. We've got... Uh, <laughs> we got the Flash coming back. We've got Green Arrow coming back. Um, the 100, finally, they're bringing back that series. Um, what else we got coming back, Drew? Um, well, eventually, in the short term, we have, like you just said, Arrow's coming back, the Flash is coming back. Um, premiering also uh, this coming week will be DC's Legends of Tomorrow, which I'm very curious to check out. It is a uh, superhero blended with Doctor Who. Just to basically just, you know, give it a name and classify what it is. So right. I should check that one out. Um, and also, we were discussing this before the show. Uh, news just broke today that Jessica Jones has been picked up for a second season. Woohoo! Not too big of a Yeah, I was expecting that to go down. Um, and in further news, uh, Punisher, John Bernthal, dude hasn't even shown up yet on the screen. And they're already talking about giving him a spinoff series for Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and all that good stuff as well. So, you, know, you know who he's married to? No. Who is he married to? to the niece of Olympic and pro wrestler Kurt Angle. No way! Yeah. Really? Yeah. Kurt Angle, Mr. Integrity himself, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's, his, uh, that's his uncle. Nice. <laughs> Kurt Angle is dude's uncle, wow. I to see them fighting over the turkey leg on Thanksgiving Day. I wonder who wins Oh, that. dude, I would love to be in that room. Like, just to hear Bernthal's voice when he gets all gruff and pissed off. <laughs> Can't be the way it was before! Uh. <laughs> like, turn over the tables. <laughs> oh, man. Are you guys looking forward to Gotham? Because I know you uh, caught it in the beginning. We used to talk about it and kind of drift off on that one. Um, guess first, Neil. What do you think of Gotham? <laughs> I have to confess, I've uh, only seen half of an episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, taking my own bias into consideration, it's all right. It was all right. I, admittedly, I just kind of fell off after the first season. Um, Dean and Seven will probably be able to give us more info on what their thoughts are on that when it comes to the show. I mean, I, I'm hesitant of uh, you know, saying why I didn't like it, but. Right at the start, in, in the first episode, like, Jim Gordon, apparently it's his first day on the job. Mm -hmm. And there's that problem in the police office. And mm -hmm. he takes charge and, uh, as a rookie. And everyone listens. It, it just didn't, I didn't really buy it. And everyone's response to it. it just didn't, it seemed like overly dramatic to have a punchy entrance rather than a believable situation. There's nothing subtle about the show, that's why. And I agree. I like the first time, just like, didn't he just get there? How, he's, in a hostage, he's in a hostage negotiation and he just climbed, just put his card into the little clipper and then it was like, we got a crisis. No one else can handle this except Jim Gordon. And to be so cool about it. Yeah. And he was so mellow about it. And Dean, your, your idea of Jim Gordon is that he was the new sheriff in town and that's more or less why they throw him in those situations. Yeah, that's the way I kind of, every time I see it, it's sort of like, it's a Western. He's the <laughs> new sheriff in town. And he's out to clean the town up. The, the good guys, the bad guys, you can't tell who to. It's a dirty town, and he's, out, he's there to clean it up. And sometimes the imagery, I, get, I, I, um, I remember the, uh, the final episode of the first season, it had that high noon kind of feel to it. Right. Where, he had, where he was there in the, in, the, in, the, in the slow mo with him shooting the shotgun, and, and there's all, all, those, all those, he's outnumbered by the villains. I had, it just gives me. Uh, a feeling like it, it's more like a western when it comes to uh, the warning. Yeah, it took, I can it see took that. a couple episodes really to get in there um, as far as developing the cha uh, characters. I think when they first started the series, they didn't really know 
how much time to give every situation. Like developing the, you know, the creation of Penguin, um, developing Bruce Wayne. Um, I, I think it took it took some time, but they started to really get the rhythm of it. And then also they had Jada Pinkett in the first um, series, and I think they wanted to really use her star power. But the problem is it was a character that really never existed. They created it just for the show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. But as it kept developing, because you really, you never really got to get the backstory of Jim Gordon. You never really got to really get a feel of why he was so frustrated. Why, you know, why would even Batman even decide to confide in him or work with him? And you got to see the beginnings of this relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even Catwoman, you know, they talk about, well, Bat, uh, Batman and Catwoman get together. But you, you go back and you see this relationship as kids and you're like, oh, this, this would make a lot more sense. So there's like this one little era of time that nobody ever touched before. And I mm -hmm. think that's what makes the show interesting. Mm -hmm. Good. So good. No, I was just going to say, actually, it was a segue, really, but um, I was going to say with Arrow, Arrow, they, they didn't learn from their mistakes. They just kept going going. No, I know, see, I'm going <laughs> to actually got to disagree on that. I know exactly where Arrow messed up, in my opinion. Go ahead, go it's for it. It's when they took the relationships of the characters, and in particular, I'm talking about Oliver Queen mm -hmm. and Felicity, and they forced forced their relationship to be romantic it's right. like it really had this weird effect on the rest of the cast to where it's like you have this cohesive like unit of people who they're friends their family they care about each other but then because it's cw and the attractive people all have to make out at some point in the episode <laughs> it took that dynamic that they had but a mutual respect, <laughs> appreciation that was between Oliver and Felicity and it just became another campy romantic thing and then they have to keep doing that to remind all the people that have two second attention spans they're together guys don't forget they're a romantic couple and that detracts from the episode itself because you're constantly having to be reminded that you know Oliver has a girlfriend now guys don't forget now how come how come the flash which pretty much the same producers how come the flash doesn't seem to be as annoying with the relationships even though they do incorporate that strongly flash is a lot more tongue-in-cheek it knows that it's silly it knows that some of the science fiction elements make absolutely no sense okay. and when you start delving into time travel at a certain point it's not even like a case of jumping the shark at that point it's like we've left orbit so we know that and we're just gonna have fun with it doctor who knows that and it does the same thing and it's awesome <laughs> even when it's ridiculous it's awesome mm. so it's now, more self-aware. Now, Neil, you can't see it right now, but we do have a graphic up that says Twisted Dark, your, your graphic novel. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, the reason why I kind of honed in on Gotham, because it does have, it, it does have a darker tone, but not in a dark going out of its way to, oh, we're going to be gritty, we're going to, it, it, it showed New York, basically Gotham is New York, and it showed serious issues serious Kevin. situations and because you you have this twisted dark thing going on i mean it's it's very well titled titled um do you know how do you know when to go further with a story to to let things go to let it ride like how do you do that as a writer oh, that's a big question i have no idea <laughs> um, so I, I guess you're just asking, how do you know if you're pushing the envelope too far? Is that what you're pushing saying? Pushing the envelope too far or saying having multiple stories and multiple things, like um, like a lot of the, like in Twisted Dark, it seems very straightforward, the stories that you were telling, the situations you were telling. But you, you, you do have other works that are more complicated. And like, how do you know when to not throw too much in the pot? Like, and how to push... You know the, the the B story, the A story. You know. How, how, oh, oh, that, that's. Whew. I mean, I think that that's just your particular style of writing. I mean, what Peter David does is he actually thinks of someone in advance of who he's writing the story for. So he'll write a particular title for uh, his son, or right. one for his wife, or one for different people. So because, for example, I I know exactly what sort of jokes my mother would crack up laughing, and they're different from ones I can tell my sister or my father. So. Okay. 
uh, and the same thing what type of stories they enjoy what music they like and if you have someone in mind you can just go down a particular style that way if you want to be different in styles right um but in terms of going too far with the envelope it, i think it's just a balance um you, you want stories that provoke you and you get, get an emotional reaction but you don't never want to go too far because never, no one wants to feel too much it's too uncomfortable but and there, there is one more point and that's like uh, the stories are like, always like a bell curve in terms of how many people will actually understand what you're trying to do or will um uh, will respond to something in a certain way so you're always going to be too little for some people and too much for other people and you just got to go for a balance where you think um typically it's it's who you're writing for would like because that helps you find what balance you want yeah you can totally understand I can that, that. Yep. yeah that's awesome